snippets of my book life here in New York City. My name is Christina. I'm a New York City-based book reviewer, and I have a little secret to share with you. I'm not the biggest fan of museums. I know, a shocking statement to make for a person who's trying to seem cool in the city, but sometimes I find them really tedious. They're too big. I get lost. There's so much art. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> But today I'm going to try to dispel these notions and go to a fun event at the Met, which is located next to Central Park. I've never been to a museum at night, which seems pretty fun if you ever watched Night at the Museum as a child. So I'm excited to explore it and take you along. and visit a bookstore. And I got to see an author in the wild just signing books. This is the author of the most recent novel, Trust. Some people like to see celebrities. I like to see authors in the wild. Then there was, of course, some coffee. It is now Sunday morning, and I came to a park in Brooklyn to talk to you about one of the first nonfiction books that I read and actually trying to meet my resolutions. Earlier this morning, I went to a cafe, ate a pastry. I was reading Hemingway, which I told myself I would try it, even if I didn't like it. I think currently it's not the mood that I'm looking for. I really like his writing, which reminds me a lot of Steinbeck. It is very concise, sparse. You're intrigued from the first page, but I think the subject matter is a bit too bleak about this single man who lives alone on an island and his convoluted relationship with his sons and his ex-wife and drinking. It's a bit much. I'm here to talk to you about the first non-fiction book that I read. This is Dirty Work, Essential Jobs and the Hidden Toll of Inequality. I loved it. I think this is a really accessible read for anyone who hasn't read too many sociology or political science books as a journalist, is a great writer. In this, he defines dirty work as being jobs that, number one, cause substantial harm to, the, to people, animals, or the environment. So think, for example, individuals that have to work in slaughterhouses. That is obviously causing harm to the animals that are being killed and the environment. Number two, it is a job that good people would shame and find some sort of moral stigma that shouldn't be there, but outside society presents to it. Number three, it harms people that are actually doing the job both mentally and physically. Now, what are these jobs that he discusses? He has multiple chapters. The first chapter that he covers is individuals who work within prisons, specifically as guards or psychiatrists and like mental health providers within the prisons themselves. And in it, he discusses how violence is perpetuated by the staff workers Quite frankly, there were really gruesome events that were mentioned in the book of how staff members of prisons have murdered inmates. I found it fascinating how he described how the staff members completely dehumanized the people in the prisons, first as a form of safety to themselves, but also in a way it warps the human relationship between the two. I had actually written and researched a bit about the incarceration system in the U.S., specifically focusing on how women are impacted in prisons and how structural injustices are perpetuated within the incarcerated system in the United States specifically. So to me, these chapters didn't reveal, reveal quite as much new information, but it was intriguing to read. And he also talks about people that work on oil rigs and how that's obviously harmful to the environment, but it's also a really intense job. And he covers the stories of individuals who have worked in the slaughterhouses. And the main thing from the book is the fact that all of these jobs exist within our society, but on a day-to-day -day basis, if we're not the ones doing them, we kind of forget that they're quote unquote, a necessity in our society and no one really wants to think about the implications that it has on the people actually doing the job for example a lot of people when they talk about 
activism around stopping eating animals, it is thought about from the environmental perspective or from the animal's perspective, but not much conversation goes around from the individual's perspective who actually work in the slaughterhouses. This kind of reminds me of the famous work that I'm currently blanking on, but I will put here that uncovered what actually happens in slaughterhouses. And it's interesting because at the time the journalist had written that in hopes of ensuring that there were better labor rights for the people working in the slaughterhouse, but it ended up actually spurring more laws when they used to be written around the safety of meat and sanitation. Did They didn't misread it, but <laughs> the book didn't achieve the impact the author had initially wanted. So I really loved this book. I am definitely a sociology nerd. I also really liked when he had cited traditional sociologists such as Irving Goffman, who was one of the first individuals that actually wrote about psychiatric care in the U.S. in his book Asylum. He also was one of the people that talked about stigma and what does stigma mean with individuals in society. And there is so much more I could talk about with this book and these topics, but I will end it here. All these topics are quite heavy. I'm going to take a little break and talk to you about another book that I read recently, which is a little lighter in the genre and was a fun quick read. Now, for the more fun one that I read was A Very Nice Girl by Imogen Crimp, which I love. Everyone has been terming it as the sad millennial girl novel, which it kind of is, but I love that. <laughs> and it is about Anna, who is aspiring to be an opera singer. She doesn't have much money. She lives in London and she falls in love with a 40 year old banker named Max. And in it, Crimp analyzes the complex relationship between Anna and Max as an older man, the power dynamic that exists between the two of them. But what I really liked was the fact that Crimp didn't make Anna the victim. She didn't just victimize Anna. And it wasn't didn't read as if like, oh, that poor girl, she was completely abused by this man. It shows also how Anna made mistakes in the relationship and could have gone now and was kind of doing this to herself as well. I thought it was very smart in its portrayal. It was also inspired by Jean Reese's novel, Voyage in the Dark, which I absolutely love and have talked about before. So all around, really liked the novel. It was smart, it was witty, it was fun. It was about a girl in London. What more could you want? Of course, visiting one bookstore wasn't enough and I had to end my week going to McNally Jackson Books in Seaport right on the water. I just recently found this bookstore and I absolutely love it. It's also broken down into sections around the world. They have a beautiful cafe. This is a book I wanted to buy. This is a book I wanted to buy. This is a book I wanted to buy. So many books. It is now the start of a new week and I hope you enjoyed watching just a few snippets of my week in New York City. Let me know if you want me to create more videos like this where I go around my favorite spots in the city, talk about my books, show you around. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week. Bye.